Hi, Alice. Hi, David. Hi, Benjamin. And if you're watching, hi, Sam. It's Daddy again with another bedtime story. This is part two of Snow White and Rose Red. So, if you haven't listened to the first part already, make sure you go back and listen to that first. But as per usual, we have a picture to go with things. And this time, it looks like Sorry if it's hard to see. It's in a funny place. A little pot of gold. Looks fancy. So, let's find out what happens in part two of Snow White and Rose Red. What a merry time they had in the little cottage. Remember that Snow White, Rose Red, and a bunch of animals had come together in the cottage for the winter. How Snow White and Rose Red played with the bear and teased him. They almost smothered him with love, so that from time to time he had to scold them mildly. Snow White, take care. Rose Red, by gentle in your play. Twas sad to slay the husband before the wedding day. What do you think that means? The girls laughed at this. But when spring came, the bear could not be persuaded to stay. I must guard my treasure from the wicked dwarves. While the ground was frozen, they could not dig, but now they will again steal whatever they can lay their hands on. He explained and took his leave of them. As he passed through the door, he tore his skin on an old nail, and for a moment they saw a gleam like pure gold under his fur. But before the girls could ask about it, he was gone. One day, Snow White and Rose Red went into the forest to gather kindling wood. In a clearing, they came across an ugly dwarf. I don't know if it matters that he was ugly, but let's find out more. Jumping about and screeching angrily. He had got his beard caught in a crack in a tree stump, and he could not get it out again. The girls ran willingly to his aid, but though they tugged and tugged, they could not pull him loose. In the end, Snow White had to cut off the tip of his beard. Oh, you horrible children, to disgrace me so, he hissed. Without even bothering to thank them, he snatched up a pot of gold from the grass and disappeared beneath the ground. Another time, they found the ungrateful mannequin down by the river. This time, his beard was caught up in his fishing line. And a great fish was dragging him deep into the water. Help, he called desperately. Again, the girls took pity on him. Since they could not untangle his beard, they had to cut it off right at the top. The dwarf insulted them at the top of his voice, grabbed a sack of pearls from the reeds, and made a rude face at them. And once more, the earth swallowed him up. That's the last time we help him, ungrateful fellow, resolved the girls, and they went home to bed. So in the last part of the story, the girls were nice to very various forest animals, and they seemed to make good friends, especially with the bear, thanks to their kindness. In this part of the story, it sounds like a little dwarf kept getting into trouble, and they helped him, and he was not happy with that at all. So it looks like this might be a story about kindness, and I think kindness is always good, but I think we might hear a couple of different things about how the bear feels about their kindness, and how the dwarf feels about their kindness. So, think about good ways to be kind as you lay down to sleep, and close your eyes, think happy thoughts, and remember that Daddy loves you very much, and have yourself a good night.